This video is on Cushing's syndrome. For introduction, sometimes we are confused with these two terms, which are Cushing's syndrome and Cushing's disease. So first, Cushing's syndrome, it can be due to a few causes, which results in the production of excessive cortisol by the adrenal glands. Whereas for Cushing's disease, it means the case is due to a pituitary adenoma and it is a cause of Cushing's syndrome. So the cause of Cushing's syndrome, the most common cause is due to medication, whereas the second most common cause will be Cushing's disease due to pituitary cause. For physiology of cortisol pathway, first the hypothalamus will secrete corticotropin-releasing hormone to stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to release adrenal corticotropic hormone, the SCTH. And this SCTH will stimulate the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. So any defect in this axis will cause excessive in cortisol. Moving on to the causes of Cushing's syndrome. First cause can be due to Cushing's disease, where it is due to pituitary adenoma. So when there is pituitary adenoma secreting excessive SCTH, it will, the excessive SCTH will stimulate the adrenal cortex to release more cortisol, resulting in excessive cortisol. Second cause is due to adrenal cortical tumor, which can be adrenal adenoma or adrenal carcinoma as well, will result in excessive production of cortisol. Another cause is ectopic SCTH production can be due to small lung cell carcinoma or bronchial carcinoid tumor in the lungs. And also, the most common cause is exogenous glucocorticoids due to medications. For etiology of Cushing syndrome, there is the rule of nine. So Cushing syndrome, the causes can be due to exogenous cause or endogenous cause. 90% of the cases are due to exogenous medications, whereas 10% is due to endogenous cause. So the endogenous cause can be further divided into ACTH dependent and independent when 90% will be SCTH dependent. These are the few causes I've listed over here. And pituitary adenoma, also known as Cushing's disease, contributes to 90% of the SCTH dependent cause. So the most common cause is exogenous medications and the second most common cause will be Cushing's disease. For clinical features of Cushing's syndrome for symptoms, the patient might complain with increase of weight, mood changes, proximal weakness where they cannot lift up their arms or take any things that are higher than them, gonadal dysfunction for male and female, and also increase in acne. Whereas for signs, we can look for central obesity, plethora, moon face where the face is rounded, buffalo neck hump, and supraclavicular fat pads. And also, we have to check the abdomen for any abdominal stri. And also check for any abdominal mass. To investigate for Cushing syndrome, we divide the test into screening tests and localization tests. For screening tests, we can do overnight dexamethasone suppression tests. This is a very good outpatient test. So we give dexamethasone 1 mg per oral at midnight. And then we do check the serum cortisol at 8 a.m. the following morning. So normally the cortisol will be suppressed. If there is no suppression, it suggests Cushing syndrome. Another screening test we can do is 24-hour urinary free cortisol to check for the cortisol level. Next, the localization test to find where is the tumor. So we do plasma ACTH and if it is undetectable, there is no increase in SCTH, it suggests an adrenal origin of the tumor. So we will have to do further investigation, like doing CT scan of the adrenal glands to look for any tumor. If SCTH is detectable, on the other hand, we will have to see whether it is a pituitary cause or it is due to ectopic SCTH production. So we can do high-dose suppression tests. If the cortisol is suppressed, it means it's pituitary cause. Then we will do further investigation, like MRI of the pituitary gland. If cortisol is not suppressed, 
it suggests ectopic SCTH production, where we will have to look for where the tumour is. We can do CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. For example, we can look for small lung cell carcinoma and also others. For treatment of Cushing syndrome, depends on the cause of the Cushing syndrome. If it is due to medications, we stop the medications if possible. If it is due to Cushing's disease, we can do transphenoidal removal of pituitary adenoma. If the cause is adrenal origin, for example, adrenal adenoma or carcinoma, we can do adrenalectomy, which is, which is a good option for adenoma, but it really cures cancer. So if it is carcinoma, we have to follow it by radiotherapy and also other drugs. If it is due to ectopic ACTH, the tumor is located well and haven't spread yet, we can do surgery to remove the tumor. For prognosis of Cushing syndrome, if it is left untreated, it has an increase in vascular mortality. If treated, the prognosis is good, but these symptoms and signs often remain. So we have to follow up the patient carefully and then manage individually. That's all for this video. Thank you.